After driving to La Grande Motte for the whole winter to watch the building process of our Outremer 55 Great Circle, it was launched in April and then delivered in July. Be careful when you were moving. <laughs> Before the start of our world tour in September, there was only a couple of weeks to try out the boat and make it ready for the Grand Tour. So we went to Mallorca and back together with Specaint and tried out all the sails and we were very impressed about the performance of the boat. Still a lot to learn as it's not easy to keep the spinnaker stable with the full main up. We had a good time on Mallorca, together with Speckeens, Bombarda and Oliver, a future Utemer 55 owner. And then the big day is there. We are going to start a rally around the world. The start was not very spectacular. There was no wind at all. Crossing the start line with all the boats just behind each other. We start slowly in the direction of uh, Mallorca, Ibiza and Formentera. And we have time to uh, see several very beautiful anchorages. So we're kind of waiting on the wind to shift. And increase. So finally we have some wind. It's still only seven, eight knots, but well, the boat is moving really well at this uh, wind speed already. It was really nice that we had a a slow start because we were pretty tired everybody it was so exciting the last couple of days and uh, now at least we have time to uh, get used to the life on board we also found out that it was really nice to sail uh, in the rally because uh, sometimes we were sailing with spec paint with inky blue with suria and uh, everybody is going on their own speed to the south uh, of Spain, to Seville. But uh, you meet all the boats everywhere, you can see where everyone is. And that concept we really like.
After a day trip from Mallorca to Ibiza, we managed to hide for the upcoming storm on the south end of the island before heading for Formentera. The forecast said 9 knots, but as you can see the average two wind speed is more like 5. And the speed over ground at an angle between 120 and 150 has been, I think, on average around 6. So we just dropped Marijke in a taxi on our way to the airport. Tina and I are heading for Gibraltar. The A2 is really quite a nice sail. So we're going about 8 knots and just over 7 knots of wind. We have to go a little bit higher up, but uh, it was amazing. Going up no more than 7 degrees gave us 2 more knots of speed, PMG. Great lunch. busy shipping line here and exactly when we were in the middle then uh, of course the wind decided to go back to two knots I don't know how we would have survived the last uh, couple of days without you You had fear of heights, hoor. Yes. Well, well not a lot. <laughs> By the looks at it. <laughs> it is kind of narrow. Uh, straight. But there's Gibraltar. And there's Morocco on the other side. So we're heading towards the TSS. Just in front of the TSS we're going to sit the starboard. Over the other bow, and we're gonna raise the A2. That's already there. So, to protect the windward bow, to be able to go a little bit deeper. But we're still clearly against the current here. Maybe drink something later? Yeah, What is there going on, Jongske? And then the whole fleet comes together in Cadiz. Yeah. 
I'm going really slow. I was so happy to be back on the boat again. My mom was well now, so fortunately I could travel back. Together with Victor on our boat, we start uh, the trip over the river to Seville, where we are going to stay for almost a week. And then the official start is there. After a very nice uh, week in Seville, we uh, sailed out early in the morning uh, because the bridge opened at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. What do you think about Marrakesh new sweater? The odyssey of a lifetime. So we're on our way to the Canaries now. If I can make another recommendation for the setup and the options of the Tomer, buy this. We're in nine knots before already, where the others were still on the engine. Seven knots of speed and five knots of wind. Not too bad. We chose to uh, take a little bit more distance from the Strait of Gibraltar because there was not a lot of wind and the waves were very confused. And the difference between uh, Spekaint and us on a certain moment was 10 miles. And uh, I think they had 10 knots more wind and a lot more confusing waves. So it was more relaxed to be a little bit more west. The wind is kind of constant. Say 16, 17, 20 knots. We're about 50 miles off the Moroccan coast and going straight. We are pretty much alone on the ocean, but still when you look at the BNG, we always had some boats on the transponder. So you never felt really alone. But when you put a drone in the air and you see only yourself on this big ocean, then you think, oh my God, we're still alone. Look at the camera okay before you dry. Yeah, We were so lucky to have Tina on board for the first section of our world trip, at least until the Caribbean. She's not only a very good help on the boat, but she's also a great cook. Mark and I, we always have discussion before the night, because I want to take the big sails off and um, go in the night um, safely with only the main and the jib. We did furl the Jenniker and put the jib up instead, but it's uh, especially the waves that were really annoying. 
and uh, the wind got up to 24 knots as well, so it makes sense to change to a smaller sail. 50 miles to go. In combination with the main sail, the spinnaker is very unstable. We decided to uh, take away the whole main and go only on the spinnaker. And that was very good practice because we found out that the spinnaker without the main was perfectly stable. Above 50 knots, between 15 and 20 knots, we have a very decent speed only with the spinnaker. So I think in the Passat winds it will be totally fine to run the spinnaker alone. Your questions, the reason. We decided to take the spinnaker down a couple of miles before we would enter the strait between Graciosa and uh, Lanzarote because we had no experience until that time how we would manage to take the spinnaker in without a mainsail. The next crossing is from Lanzarote to Tenerife, where the next technical stop of the Gliwo will take place and all the boats will be prepared for the crossing to the Caribbean. Caroa had to stay in Tenerife for another week. With a big gong, they wished everybody good luck on their trip. So we did a small round tour, waved them goodbye and then left also. Because of the lack of wind in the uh, first part of our Atlantic crossing, we decided to uh, make a stop in uh, the Cape Verde Islands. Finally, it took us five and a half days from Tenerife to uh, the Cape First. We were expecting a lot of motoring because there was absolutely no wind forecasted in certain areas. But it was unbelievable. The boat sailed pretty good. Not extremely fast, of course, but pretty good with very, very light winds. 
It was exciting to come in uh, in Mindelo during the night because there are all kinds of wrecks and abandoned ships in that bay. After a very short stop in the Cape Verde, we decide uh, to uh, start the ocean crossing already. Uh, the forecast for the wind was uh, pretty strong. In and around Mindelo, between the islands, uh, the forecast was like 50 knots. So we're on our way for part two of the Atlantic crossing. And on the ocean, the forecast was uh, just 30, 35 knots and uh, sailing, we feel completely comfortable. So we said we can better leave. So the first two days with the small sail area, we did actually uh, 200 miles per day. There were pretty impressive waves the first couple of days, but uh, always when we try to catch them on the camera, it, it's not even close to what we experience ourselves. But the boat handles them very well. It accelerates very fast, both on the waves and from wind gusts. And the difference uh, between this boat and our last boat is that it doesn't stop so quickly in the next wave. It just goes over it. It is like the bows are cutting through the water and the acceleration just continues. This is since we started with the spinnaker. After a while, the spinnaker turned four times around the forestay and the jib. So it was a bit of a hassle to uh, get that loose. After that, we reefed the boat back with another reef, but we didn't see the point of that. And then decided to get rid of the mainsail completely. And from that moment on, it was so relaxed. We could sail exactly the Great Circle course. Surfing of a wave, the spinnaker still collapses every once in a while, but without the main, it recovers by itself. For this speed, you really have to be lucky with the weather. Uh, we constantly had a good wind, most of the time between 15 and 25 knots. That's perfect for the symmetrical spinnaker. Because it's a heavy duty one, we could leave it on uh, during squalls. And I think that's very convenient. Our average speed overall is 9.4 knots. Well, it depends, of course, whether we're surfing of a wave or not. Or, uh... As you can see, uh, it went from uh, 8 to 16 knots in, in just seconds. And the scores are getting heavier. This one uh, approached 40 knots. And then after only nine days of sailing, uh, we arrived in Barbados where we had time to relax and where Sander and Jessica were visiting us. Thank you. 
and then tomorrow morning we will cross to Martinique, which should be a day sail. It's getting light, 5.30 or something like that. Ready to cross to Martinique. We will have the wind on the beam, 20-25 knots, with a lot of squalls. So what we did is in, we started with uh, two reefs in the main, and then we used the code zero in and out uh, when the wind dropped a bit. It's a full rainbow. One hundred miles under ten and a half hours. And this time we stayed in Martinique for uh, several weeks. We celebrated uh, Christmas and New Year there, and we sailed completely around the island. And actually, now we know every anchorage there. Another Dutch boat arrives in the bay, it is actually Bombarda, the guys that we met before. They crossed the ocean with the Ark, just came from St. Lucia and are going to celebrate Christmas with us. Merry Christmas! <laughs> The last day of the year was actually a very rainy day. 
We went from Petit Anse to Les Trois Ilets, and there we were going to celebrate uh, New Year's Eve together with Surya. Again, we want to be able to change quickly. As you can see, every now and then there are nice little showers passing by. We are already so used to the speed of this boat that we think it's normal. But when we see a normal monohull that we used to sail for all of our lives, even smaller than that one, then you can see the enormous speed of this boat. But you get used to it very quickly. taking around this peninsula and then Bay de Tresor is there. This was our route today. Bringing the boat into the arena, Marina du Marais. We have to stay in the marina for the technical maintenance again with all the other boats. After the technical stop and all the social activities that we had with the whole group in Martinique, the trip continues westward in the direction of Panama. Our first goal is to go to Los Rocas, Venezuela. This one looks really scary. Now there's a squall, <laughs> squall behind us we can't avoid anymore. 
Luckily, Fitia knows the area and knows it's safe there. Otherwise, we would never dare to go there. But I think we go with a group of seven boats in that direction. So it's almost midnight. My shift begins now. I'm gonna be here until sunrise. Uh, Spec Ain is preparing to get the spinnaker down. And we are just uh, behind them. Uh, we saw pictures from above where it's uh, really, really, really blue. It's yellow waters and reefs. Los Rocas uh, didn't disappoint. It was a beautiful area. It was very unspoiled and we had a perfect time there. For the last night in Los Rockers we anchored in Calle de Aqua and the next day we started very early, 4 o'clock in the morning because we were both awake so we said let's just go and then we were sure that we would arrive uh, in the light in Bonaire. So we started at 4 o'clock and it was pitch black, it was scary black, there was no light nowhere, there was no moon. We always like Bonaire very much. We have been there several times before and it is a very nice island. Not a huge city, it is a, a sort of a village. But on the other hand, uh, you can find everything there. Lots of restaurants, shops, and, uh, and it's a good place to provision. When we leave Bonaire, we unfortunately have to leave Spekane behind. Uh, Mirella has to go back to Holland uh, for medical reasons. Inky Blue and us, we continue our trip in the direction of Panama. We tried to have a rest in Curaçao, but they didn't want us to anchor in, uh, in one of the deserted bays. They said we had to do a COVID test and the whole checking in procedure. But that's absolutely, of course, not possible for an eight hour stay. So we continue to Aruba, where we arrive in the middle of the night. So we, uh, we should arrive at the anchorage on the west side of Aruba, early in the morning. The wind just shifted 40 degrees. 
at uh, the west point of uh, Curacao. During the night on anchor, when we were very fast asleep, we were hit by a 70 tons passenger boat who just dropped their passengers at the hotel and went back to uh, the harbor. Maar de hele voorkant is eraf, man! Ja, de mast komt naar beneden, daar ben ik bang. Even kijken, nee, deze staat ook vast. Het iframe is weg. So I went to bed at 8 o'clock in the evening to at least pick some hours of decent sleep and then I think it was 9.30 when we woke up and then it was a huge bang. Yeah, everybody physically is okay as well but it's not sure that we can continue. Well, it's definitely sure that we can't continue unless uh, the mayor performs a miracle. Morning, Yes, well, I don't know whether it's a good morning, but it's morning. It, it felt like it was lifted out of the water. I bet it did. Yeah, I could have it's, uh, but it's very special that it didn't hit the hulls or whatever. Yeah, I mean, in many ways. I came in here, Mama Mark, it just came in like this bag. Yeah, but then this piece is, it must be really, really, really strong. You can see a bend in the force tank. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. I think they would need to bring a new tube as well. Yeah, and uh, the seal is damaged as well. Yeah. Here's the anchor chain. Pass the phone down, Marika. We can show you from here. It's, uh, so now there's new hope. And in this episode, you can see that we are trying to enjoy Aruba again. The trap the plane has to go through Miami and after to Aruba. And at the same time, Sir Stefan Denner is working to find what should be the best team in order to join you to repair everything. Oh, I, can't, uh, I can't tell you how relieved we are that uh, it still seems possible to, uh, to continue. Wow, so it's gonna be all one piece, it's all one, one piece, right? Normally it is, yeah. Are they gonna repair it or are they gonna send you a whole new piece? And it's a crime against humanity. <laughs> you need to have her be the star of the show. Nobody wants to see you, <laughs> Mark. Just after 7 a.m. we're gonna bring the boat into Marina Varadero. In the meantime we have uh, contact with Thomas from Surya. Unfortunately also Surya stops with the rally because of business reasons. Thomas is prepared to sail with us the next part of the trip from Aruba until Tahiti. It's a long trip we have to do a lot of miles in a very short time and a lot of night watches. We are very pleased to have Thomas on board on this second part of our trip. Nothing else on board than our stuff. The Utermare team worked through the weekend to completely repair the boat. Francois, Thomas and Louis must be so proud of what they were doing and must be so proud of the company that they are working for. We still cannot describe how happy we are with the solution and how happy we are with the way Utermare helped us. It is still very difficult to believe what happened to us. Thank you so much, guys. And then after this perfect experience, Thomas arrived on Wednesday evening to make us ready to sail away on Friday. Also friends of ours fly over from Holland, Stefan and Jeanette, and they will join us in the first part from Aruba to Panama. I'm gonna put one reef in. Just to be prepared for the wind later on. Okay. 
We were so happy that the boat performed very well and that it was in one piece again. Uh, and even with the standard crossbeam, it performed really good. Just past the traffic separation schemes, we now have to avoid a couple of the boats that are on anchor uh, to get to the entrance uh, between the two breakwaters. This is Great Circle, we're eight miles from the breakwater and heading for Shelter Bay Marina. So when we arrive in Panama, we find out that we can go very quickly through the Panama Canal. So two days after we arrive there, it's already our turn to go. Unfortunately, the first try doesn't work out fine because of a broken gearbox cable. We can't maneuver the boat anymore and we crash one boat into the side of the lock. So we had to abort, go back to Shelter Bay Marina. I love you! Yeah, you should. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. We will see, we will see you later. Bye-bye. <laughs> and then luckily, after a couple of hours, we got a phone call that we actually could go again the next day. That's the first story. After the first three locks, uh, you arrive at a lake, beautiful lake uh, in the middle of the jungle. Then everybody goes on their own speed through the lakes and the, and the channel, the last part of the channel. And then just before the last three locks, we raft up again. Bridge, huh? After the bridge, it's the Pacific. The Odyssey of a lifetime. We're in the yeah. Pacific, darling. Thanks, guys. Enjoy sailing. And we're first starting with an hour of rest. We're gonna pass the islands in front of us. Right through the anchorage. Kind of busy here. Yeah. Well, everybody is really tired. <laughs> the captain is uh, exhausted. Uh, seven knots of wind. We're passing a little island in the middle of the sea. It's kind of a rock. It's called Morpello, apparently Colombian. And there's even a ship there. Yeah. 34 knots now. Yay! Happy captain! 14, 15, 16, 17. 
We are very happy with a huge A2 spinnaker uh, because in this area when there is not a lot of wind and it's mostly a little bit from the side, yeah, then it's a perfect sail. Now we've used all sails, uh, except for the symmetrical spinnaker this time. Well, with that uh, had its turn already during the Atlantic crossing. Uh, the wind is turning more to the south, which uh, gives us a different angle. And uh, that's where the Code Zero fits in really well. So we have been following this shower, or what it is. Well, we feel like proper ocean racers. They had a, well, they do it with a big depression and we do it with a small shower, but we're keeping the same position and keeping the same wind all the time. Which really helps because we thought that uh, the wind would be down at seven, eight, nine knots now. And the last part we were even completely upwind. We had to roll in the Code Zero because the apparent wind went up too much. But we could roll out the jib and point up very high. Almost at the equator. Yeah. Yeah. Three, Three, eight. Eight. Arriving in the Galapagos was great. We've been there nine years ago, so we know how it is there, but it was so good to return there on your own keel. We never expected that we would ever do that. It was so good to see everybody again and it was such a warm welcome, but we were very happy to be there. Our course is middle between the red and the orange line. 238 magnetic now. It's not that bad. After all, with the code zero still on, it's doing 227. Today is Sunday, Sunday evening, sun is almost going down. We still have almost 2,300 miles to go. Today is a very fast day. Average speed until now is 11 knots, around 265 miles, 24 hours. That will be our new record. South of us, Vitya is even going faster. Almost halfway, 1,514 miles to go and that in six and a half days. All of a sudden we had a squall coming over, didn't expect it at all, went up to 26 knots. Uh... On the Atlantic we had a constant wind between 18 and 25 knots and then squalls in between. And that was uh, the perfect amount of wind for the red storm spinnaker. But here the standard wind was a lot lower, but we were in an area with a lot of squalls the last couple of days. So that's the reason that we still put a storm spinnaker on, but then in the periods in between the squalls, it was too little sail actually for the storm spinnaker. We just let it go. 
well. 24 knots. I'm not impressed easily by the squalls anymore. Uh, they're not that heavy, but uh, well, you, you never know. After crossing the Pacific in 13 days, we arrived in Nukuhiva and were able to film all our friends coming in after the crossing. After hurrying for a couple of weeks, we did actually 4,600 miles from Aruba to Nukuhiva all constantly in a hurry. We had to get used to the slow life again and we were really enjoying uh, Nukuhiva. to the waterfall was actually one of the highlights. It was beautiful. The next island is going to be Wapo, 25 miles south of Nukuhiva. The islands are very beautiful. We made beautiful walks and we really enjoy to go slower after a month of hurrying up. go to Hivao, we visit one bay in the island just south of it, Tawata. We heard that there were manta rays there. When we got closer to the island, the wind came from the gap between Hivao and Tawata, straight on our nose. Actually another beautiful bay here, also a nice beach, but it was difficult to go with your dinghy there because of the waves that were rolling in. It is so unspoiled, there's not a lot of tourism and we are so fortunate that we could sail this area. 6 a.m. Waking up as today we go from Hivao to Fatuiva. Supposed to be one of the most beautiful islands of the Marquesas. Even Thomas came out of bed. We 
we are arriving at uh, Fatuiva, the last island we're going to visit in the Marquesas before we cross to the Toro Motors. According to Marijke, the Bay of Virgins on Fatuiva is the most beautiful anchorage we've ever seen. And from this beautiful bay, the next day we went to the main town of Fatuhifa. Oh wow, avocados! We leave the Marquesas early in the morning to cross to the Tour Motors, a part of French Polynesia about uh, 400 miles south of the Marquesas and we expect to be there in about two days. And it's Thomas' birthday today. So this is our very first pass into an atoll. We never did this before. In Fakarava, the South Pass is a beautiful spot to dive or to snorkel. There are hundreds and hundreds of sharks and there's lots of coral. Well, it makes sense to keep paying attention because this one's not on the chart. And while Inky Blue was a little bit distracted, and they hit the reef, so we immediately went back and helped them. Now uh, Inky is going to the north of the island, where there's more epoxy uh, ready. Right next to Fakarava, there's a beautiful atoll called Toao, and that seemed a nice destination to test out the temporary repairs on Inki. <laughs> the 
currently starting now, two knots. Today we start early in the morning, we have to do 225 miles to Tahiti and we are going to do that in a little bit more than a day. So we start early morning and then we will arrive somewhere during the day in Tahiti. Nine knots of wind and we have eight knots of boat speed. Uh, there will be hardly any wind, so we are going to use our big A2 sail and find out if we can make enough apparent wind to keep the sail in the air and to sail the whole trip to Tahiti. If the apparent wind drops below six and a half, seven knots, then it is very difficult to keep the spinnaker in the air. And at that moment, you might consider to, uh, to take it down. But actually, the rest of the trip, we could completely sail. In Tahiti, there's actually only one bay left where you can anchor. In all the other areas, it's prohibited. It's not a nice area to go cruising. That's a serious pack of kids, man. Our journey around the world will continue in the first week of July.